The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday morning. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets picking things up. Uh, pretty calm territory, mixed action right now with the S&Ps. That was the SPY. We'll go back to the S&Ps. Trading just off the overnight highs. We were up to a high right near the tick of the high intraday yesterday. What were we exactly? Let's get it. 45.9250. Talking about within about 15 points of recent highs, which are about 46 08, 4609, let's get it on the chart. 4609.25 from less than a week ago. We're trading right now flat in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 40 points, trading at 15,600 on, on the dot. We got Microsoft and Google after the bell today. We got Dow off 21 points right now, 35,560. Excuse me as we jump around. And you jump to the Russell 2000, negative by four points right now, 1973. We jump over to crude. Crew contract trading at 78.38. You're off 36 pennies. We were almost up to $80 yesterday, 79.28. Gold contract off $3. A little bit of volatility on gold this morning. Check out the action, right? From 1965 to 1954 to 1965, and we're back in the middle of the action at 1955, 1959, 1959 in gold. Silver up 22 pennies at 24.80 right now. We jump over to the dollar index. Higher action, 101.48 in the dollar. We put that on a daily for some context there, getting back a lot of that deceleration. Remember, we've got 99 handled just like that. We're aiming towards 102. we got a little bit of dollar strength, and we have a little bit of weakness in rates. Interesting action coming into Fed Day tomorrow. Lower price, higher yield right now. I'm jumping over to that yield. We're talking about a yield of 3.91%. Quite the acceleration, man, chopping around on these 10 years. You back it up to where we were yesterday on my program, almost a full point from where we are right now, right? Remarkable. There's about 930 on the chart. We're at 112.15. We trade lower throughout the day, and we're lower again this morning. We're off by 15 ticks, and we got yields at almost 3.92%. The yield on the 10-year, yeah, volatility persisting, to say the least. Let's jump around to some of those FANG stocks. As we get the NASDAQ 100 in positive territory, Apple up about 75 cents to kick things off. You got Microsoft up a bit, up $3. Not bad, man. Look at these stocks, man. Remarkable. You jump over to Google shares. Google shares up about 50 cents right now as well. Meta with their numbers tomorrow, trading higher by a few dollars to 295. We jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla up a couple dollars to 271. And why not? It's a private company, but uh, let's kick it off. Why not? Twitter. They're dumping the Twitter logo, and they're going to X. Now, what's so interesting here is he tried to do this with PayPal a while back, and I'm going to find. Um, there's going to be a lot of stuff that happens with this, man. It's a private company. I say it's the greatest reality TV show going on. Cost Elon $44 billion for the production rights to it at the get-go. He's got big plans in terms of wanting to make this the app of everything. That's probably how he spun the investors to spend upwards of almost $50 billion on a company you want to get some multiples on your investment, right? He wants to make it the app of everything. Uh, he wants to build a fintech services app on top of a social media platform app, and they have already started to do this. Uh, I saw last night, they got the X logo. Do they have it? There it is. Um, Twitter was acquired by X Corp, both to ensure freedom of speech and as an accelerant for X, the everything app. Uh, so Twitter has technically been acquired by X. That's the logo, man. I saw it. They had it out last night on some of the things that were going on. Uh, there's the CEO talking about it as well. Now, I saw one tweet out there saying that Facebook Meta owns X for the use in social networking. Microsoft could own the trademark for X for use in finance and e-commerce. But he tried to do this at PayPal. Uh, let me see if I can find the link right now. He tried to do this at PayPal. I think this is it. Is it? 
Perfect. Here it is. Uh, and so what he did when he was at PayPal, okay, this tweet here is from Max Jafkin. Uh, he had wrote a book about this, okay, and he tried to make PayPal ex-PayPal and phase out PayPal. This is when Th Peter Thiel was already out of the company, and this is at a time when they were a startup and they somehow had got the name the name of the company to be used as a verb, right? You say, I'm going to PayPal somebody the money. Remarkable achievement. He wanted to name it to ex-PayPal. Uh, and the group that Thiel had hired of programmers thought it was insane. Sellers on eBay were already using the company's name, PayPal the money. Um, X had conducted a series of focus groups showing that customers disliked the brand name because it reminded them of porn. This was written previously, okay? Uh, so he's on a kick, man. He wants the app of everything. He wants to call it X. And that's how he probably pitched those investors. And we're going to see to get, get it to see it play out in real time. Um, the other side of that is that I just saw something talking about the brand value loss. Is this it? Yeah, here it is. All right, I got to pull up this article. Uh, this is a tweet from Bloomberg Technology talking about the Musk decision to turn Twitter into X wiped out anywhere between $4 billion and $20 billion in value, according to analysts and brand agencies. Uh, Twitter's gone. X is here. The bird is gone. And we're getting to see it all play out in real time. Pretty fascinating, nonetheless. All right, what else we got going on? Let's jump back to the market. Let's talk a little bit of China to kick things off because this one, interesting as well. Uh, boy, do not get out of line in China. China replaces their foreign minister after mysterious absence. He had been gone since June, uh, but he was one of Xi's strongest supporters there. And he removed Quinn Gang, maybe I pronounced that correctly, as foreign minister just seven months into the job, shortest ever tenure for the role after the diplomat mysteriously disappeared from public view. So there was a lot of talk when he got this position that he was younger than some of the diplomats that have been over there, maybe not as seasoned uh, with the resume that some have, a little bit older than himself. But yeah, he's out just like that. I was looking for his age in here because I'm pretty sure they had it somewhere. I was reading this early this morning. Yeah, and they talked about in one instance, maybe it was a different article I was reading it on. Boy, this guy, you talk about detailed. He would show up. They had the Belarus visit at one point. Okay, I'll find the article I was talking about. They had a, a visit where Xi was visiting Belarus. And this guy that just got let go, right, made a call at 2 in the morning to one of the officials in Belarus, demanded to show up at the museum that Xi was going to be at the next day right at 2 a.m., walk through every single detail that Xi was going to go through at that museum in Belarus, and even – made sure to perfect the details of when music would start playing on exactly what stair it would start playing as she is coming up those stairs. Um, so he enjoyed his position, but he probably stepped out of line. They were saying it may have been something in his personal life. Could have been an affair. That's what they said. Amazing how many successful people fall um, on those affairs. He could have been in line to replace Xi. Think about that, man. Uh, yeah, so he's gone. China, that's how they run business. Uh, interesting, nonetheless, over China as Xi. And he was Xi's guy. He'll take a little bit of a hit, they said, but uh, Xi's got too much power to be hurt in any way by that. Markets, folks, negative two on the S&Ps. NASDAQ positive by 32. We got yields going higher one day ahead of a Fed decision. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back, talking to our man Kevin Hicks from TD Ameritrade Network. Fast Market. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got mixed market this morning. s and is negative by two right now, trading at 4581. You get the NASDAQ 100 in positive territory by 35 points. We get some action with some earnings tonight. One day ahead of a Fed decision tomorrow to talk about some of the action. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market from the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV with your host, Kevin Hanks, Tom White. Check it out every trading day. We got quite a week of earnings and it's Fed week as well. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, it's going to be a good one today. A lot of expectations going into the end of the day. And I want to warn your viewers that even though we look at Google Alphabet, even though we look at Microsoft and all the good things they have going on with AI and all the hype around AI, both of these companies have some question marks going into earnings. Now, you know that AI is going to be on the top of everyone's uh, mind and they're going to talk a lot about it. But Microsoft has got, think about the weakness in PCs lately and what that means for Microsoft Windows. Think about the decelerating growth in Azure and cloud. And so they've got some things they have to answer to. And in terms of uh, Google Alphabet, this is about cloud spending trends and and growth, and they need, this is going to be a real look, I'll put SNAP and a digital ads. I mean, when you think about how much in, in YouTube that they rely on digital ads, they need that trend to bottom in. They still have you know, some big question marks going into their earnings. So it's going to be interesting for sure, Tommy. I was walking through some of those charts. I appreciate the breakdown, man, giving us a little bit of sanity, Kevin, because I think these stocks just go straight up. I thought that's what I heard. Uh, pretty remarkable. I'll jump over to Microsoft, and I kid, of course. Uh, Microsoft trading right now on the Thinkorswim platform, 345 bucks, Kevin. It's got 7.435 billion shares. We'll round up to 7.5 billion shares. And this thing has gone from $220 up to $345. That's $125 of run for a stock that's got 7.5 billion shares outstanding. Uh, you mentioned some of the negatives. We talked about the optimism for Netflix and Tesla shares out here. Uh, NASDAQ 100, we got a little bit of a rebalancing, Kevin. But all the markets pretty close to those all-time highs. 
when you especially look at the S&P and the NASDAQ 100. I'm asking you, you know, some forward questions, but you talked about these stocks. They're going to determine so much of where this market goes. Do you look at those all-time highs, Kevin, as somewhere that the market might want to go? Do you think we're, we're approaching some levels? Yields have risen again as we come into Fed Day tomorrow. Um, do you have a one-way market bias right now, I guess, is the question, because, boy, you laid out a great case, man, with what some of these companies are dealing with, even with the run we've had, Kevin, and we're still expecting a hike tomorrow, um, 16 months into a hiking cycle. How do you see this market as we're so close to these all-time highs? Pretty remarkable, only 20 months after the bear market began. Like things like, you know, every this morning, right? They basically everything in the kid then all their payoffs that they're going to do stocks up three bucks, pre market, right? If the market perceives that the Fed is done, we're going to and the so we're summer will lead uh, stocks to be happy and a lot of th good things to happen. So that's one look at the overall economy. I think some of the price activity yesterday, Tommy, did you notice the dollar was up, gold was down, but if you look, crude oil, copper, Tesla, uh, Las Vegas Sands, Wind Resorts, all things connected to China were very strong yesterday. So if China is finally starting to reemerge from the opening. That could be another catalyst. You already see it in call. You already see it. I mean, it got downgraded yesterday and went up big. It's up again this morning. I don't sleep on the China reopening because you see it in crude oil. You see it in copper. And so we're watching that. So, but Today, I think this after second effort by Microsoft, Google, mostly Microsoft, though, Frank. And with that in mind, Kevin, you mentioned it. I think I got two equities you may be talking about, but what is the lineup coming up on Fast Market at 12 today, man? Yeah, you know, Google Alphabet and Microsoft will be the first and third segments in the middle. Lightfolio will do a presentation on Visa, which also has earnings. We'll get a first really good look at the U.S. consumer in Visa, how many swipes they're, they're going through. So, yeah, we'll look at the three names that they big show today. Uh, the credit card industry seems to be alive and well. Visa, 240, man, quite a chart for them as well. Uh, Kevin, I appreciate the time on a busy morning, man. We'll be watching Fast Market at 12 today, and we'll talk to you tomorrow on Fed Day, man. Have a great time. You too. Folks, check it out every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV. Very fortunate to have that program. Kevin Hicks, man, I've learned so much over my years. I know I'm biased. I know they're a sponsor, folks. I tell my family, I tell my friends, though, check out the program. You can learn so much watching them walk you through hypothetical trade setups. As Kevin mentioned, we're talking about Microsoft and Google with their numbers tonight. Could the expectations be higher, right? Kevin laid out a great case, man. Um, there is a lot that these companies are going to have to deal with. I mean, you look at the likes of Google. Google's about to lose a monopoly, man, okay? They're about to lose a monopoly, and they just traded up 33% from where it was at the beginning of the year, right? Think about that. Absolutely remarkable how these companies have rebounded. Now, Google is still $30 off of where it was trading at the highs versus companies like Microsoft that are making new highs, okay? So that is factored in, to say the least. Apple, of course, making new highs, right? Crushing it. Apple... Uh, next week, August 3rd, I believe, with their numbers. But, yeah, expectations sky high. Kevin laid it out. Computers. Um, everybody bought the computers they needed during the pandemic and maybe the years that followed. Uh, not so much right now. Probably loaded up. Everybody's probably got a computer that needed one over the last couple of years. Maybe as people come into age or you got to refresh that. But a little bit of a lull in what's going on. Yeah, I always say, if I could buy YouTube, folks, multiples are everything, okay, because multiples are getting a little crazy right now with some of this. But YouTube, there is nothing like YouTube right now in terms of content, in my opinion. Netflix is a powerhouse. They're always going to be a powerhouse. But I'm telling you, man, it's pretty remarkable how – I'll give you an example. In my household, okay, number one, we got myself. We stream TFNN on YouTube, okay? Every video we do, folks, we stream it to our YouTube channel. 
We archive those shows. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel for free. You get notifications when we go live. All the videos we do are right there available for you. All the interviews are segmented out right there on our YouTube channel. Okay. Then you have the kids in the house. So you got a 17-year-old. They love YouTube, man. You got a 6-year-old. Loves YouTube. Watches Minecraft on YouTube. Um, and then you got even Tommy who likes with his tablet time. And folks, you gotta keep the tablet time in check. And there can be good tablet time and bad tablet tablet time, okay? And the one thing I will say is if you got kids, don't let them go down the YouTube rabbit hole without making sure you're watching what they're watching, okay? There's plenty of good programs you can watch on there, and there's plenty of crap that they can somehow end up pulling up if you're not watching it closely. But everybody loves YouTube, man. Everybody loves YouTube. And I look at it, we take Tommy to go get a haircut. Uh, we bring him to a haircut place that's made for kids. They have chairs that look like planes. They have TVs up there that are showing whatever you want. What do they do? They all watch YouTube. Yeah, because of course you do, right? It's free, folks. Anyway, we'll come back. We got Google. We got Microsoft. We'll take a look at those. We'll take a look at some other equities. We'll be back for the open, folks. Stay tuned. I think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. I know we had a few tech issues with Kevin. We'll get it squared away before we get it back on there tomorrow. Uh, but, yeah, he sounded a little bearish. I was chatting with my dad during the break, um, which is a bummer that we were, had a tough connection today because he's always got so much good information. But check out the program Fast Market at 12 o'clock as they always kick things off with the first session. 
kind of talking about market action, just the way Kevin and I have a conversation about what we're thinking about, about today's activities, et cetera. And as they mentioned, though, they're talking about Microsoft and Google in the first and third segment. They'll talk be talking about visa in the second segment and yeah these things have been on a tear man you jump over to visa anytime you have a stock like visa right you're almost looking at a dividend dividend play equity much less volatility priced into an earnings event okay you jump over and if you're looking for action through friday you're looking at about a seven dollar and 57 cent move if you're just looking for action for their numbers which i believe are tonight they sure are they're tonight as kevin mentioned uh, Seven dollars and thirty-one cents priced in for the earnings event happening tonight. About an eight-dollar move priced in for options expiring on Friday. But as you see, what is that? About less than a three percent move priced in to Visa after their bell tonight. You compare that to a company like Microsoft (MSFT), excuse me, and you have more than a five percent move priced in for Microsoft. Eighteen dollars just for action through tonight. Okay. Almost a $20 move if you want to buy options to expire on Friday for a $346 stock. You jump over to Google. Google shares out with their numbers tonight as well. $7.24 move for the week. That's quite a move, man. Five, six, seven percent, something like that. Now, Meta, they get their numbers tomorrow. Okay, now there's a move for you. You're paying almost 10% to get in July 28th on those numbers from Meta. You talk about expectations, man. Now, boy, I always think of our man Bud Rolfs when I see these channel lines. We got one break back in April, and we jumped right past that on earnings. It'd be interesting to see what happens with this earnings because, look, Facebook's been on a tear, man. And they've been on that tear since the beginning of the year, okay? But things really started to get crazy back in November, and then we've got two big gaps on their last earnings, okay? So they're going to have expectations sky high. Because if you think about it, we've doubled in price since that earnings event just six months ago. And that's not cherry picking the lows of the year 115. That's not cherry picking the lows of November from Meta. That's saying, where were they when they came into that earnings event six months ago? They were at 150. You had already went from 90 to 150, and you still gapped higher to almost 200. Remember that day? Then you gapped higher on the next one. Now we come into earnings at about 300. Well, that's a different story, man. You jump over to the Analyze tab. You jump to the Fundamentals tab under that. You're talking about a company that's now valued at $761 billion. This company was at like $220 billion, something like that, right? $220 to $762. Bonkers numbers. Nonetheless, uh, they are out with their numbers, yeah, tomorrow, July 26th, about a $26 move for their earnings event. Okay, uh, what else we got? Let's see, jumping around. We talked about China for sure. What are we going to talk? Yeah, let's talk this one. Talking about stock market shrugs off recession signals as rally builds near the highest levels. This is what I mentioned to Kevin. We're right near the highest levels that we've seen since April of 2022. Okay. Look at where we are in these markets, man. I know we know it, but boy, when you see it, it's not even the end of July. How about the NASDAQ comp? That's the NASDAQ comp, folks. Okay. Okay. Up 35 percent. S&P's up almost 20. Dow Jones Industrial Average, even on a banking crisis. We had a banking crisis. We had two of the biggest banks in the whole country fail over this time, right? That was the failure right there on March to show you what it looked like, okay? NASDAQ had a pullback. It was up 15. You made it to back about 7. S&P's were up almost 9 percent. They almost got even for the year, and then things really took off from there. Uh they talk a lot about this article in terms of what's going on. You get the Fed, of course. You get the Fed meeting tomorrow. You have yields. Uh, listen, it's going to be an interesting press conference tomorrow. That's the bottom line. You know, Chairman Powell, there's going to be a lot of expectations to say where we go from here. No matter what he says, remember, folks, we get two months of data, right? Next meeting, I believe, September 21st. And you are going to get, before that meeting, all of the month for economic numbers for July, all the numbers for August in there as well, and we're already going to be deep into September, September 21st on those numbers. So nonetheless, we jump over to yields and that conversation. As yeah, we got a little bit of rising yields. Ten-year, back at about 3.91%. You take a look at the daily, it's been quite a pullback. I mean, look where we're sitting, man. Look at where we're sitting, right? Yields are right where we were 10 months ago, and the Fed is still on the hiking cycle remarkable now what's so interesting about this okay 
I mean, look how close we are to where we were in June even of last year. The Fed started their hiking cycle in March. That's where they started, okay? We were at 129 in the 10-year. You made it down to 114 in a heartbeat, man. This market figured out ASAP that it was on like Donkey Kong. Uh, but we've been chopping around really since about September last year. And you could make the case that we've been chopping around really since that spike low in June of 2022 for 13 months. Now, you did spike to 121. Then you really got down into this range, as I mentioned, in September. But the reason why I bring that out is because this is a base, man. Okay? And, yeah, if we're ready to go back to lower rates, we've built that base to go back to lower rates because we are right near some of the highs we've had even on the 10 year pushing about four percent right now you did make it down to 108.26 at one point but we're right near those levels man you take a look at the two year okay and yeah that one makes more sense right because you're basically at lower price higher yield on a shorter term basis the fed's about to go to five and a quarter to 5.5 percent you take the middle of that range and you're talking about 5.37 percent money market interest on risk-free rate of return, 5.37%. Now you start going out a bit from there, you start talking about CD rates, et cetera. Of course, on a short-term basis, they're relatively high because the Fed is still gonna raise, even if they pause, that overnight lending rate's gonna be at five and a quarter to 5.5% for some period of time. Then the conversation becomes, when do they start cutting? Right. And that conversation right now is taking place in maybe January, maybe March is consensus that March would be the area that they may potentially be able to start cutting. Now, remember that September would be the first real stoppage of their hikes. So September is going to be the first time as of right now, all things considered that the market is thinking they will stop. They won't pause. They will stop. We're going to see where inflation goes from there, folks. we got two months, and we'll see. Let's jump around to some of the equities with their numbers tonight. Microsoft shares, pretty tame action, up about a quarter percent ahead of those numbers. We jump over to Google shares. Yeah, tame action as well. Gets a spike to 123. You give it back. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 52. Apple shares up a quarter percent. Tesla shares up half a percent. NVIDIA catches the bid up 1.6%. Yeah, these equities, man, relentless to the upside, to say the least. Uh, Meta with their numbers tomorrow is up a percent. They trade lower, though, on the open. Look at that spike, right? Yeah, you may see some volatility, man. We got a big week of earnings. Kevin laid out the case of the expectations, right? You got Microsoft. How are they doing? Less PC sales. Windows. Are we selling Windows if we got less PCs? Let alone, how are they going to make trillions of dollars to warrant their run from 220 to 350? Stay tuned, folks. We got lots to talk about. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now.
at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. P up by one right now. Check out that chart, man. That's a beautiful chart from a year ago. 3502, that spike low. Pretty remarkable. You get that spike low, right? We always see the spikes of the lows, and at least that was it right now, and we're 1,100 points higher, man. And that was an intraday spike. Got it all back. I remember 3,600 was the area, and it took off like a rocket ship. We had a pullback into the beginning of the year at 3,831. You had one more pullback for the bank failures coming in in March, and then we take off like a rocket ship. Uh, and talking about those bank failures, so Check this out. This one was out yesterday. Uh, FDIC scolds banks for manipulating deposit data. You talk about a need for regulators, man. It is relentless, to say the least, in terms of how anybody will cut any, co any corner to make a dollar, okay? So check it out. Lenders lowered their uninsured deposits by nearly $200 billion after bank failures. When Silicon Valley Bank ran into trouble, its customers, of course, ran for the doors. In the weeks after, dozens of banks tweaked their numbers to reduce the portions of their deposits that they said were uninsured. Check this out, right? Because that was the boogeyman, right? If you had a high level of uninsured deposits, everyone was running for the door. So what did they say? Everybody wanted to know, hey, hey, how many, how many, what's the percentage of your uninsured deposits going on right now? Because I need to know because we might be making a run for the door. So what did they do? They changed the accounting rules, but the accounting rules didn't change. So how did they do that? Here's how they did it. The FDIC sent a warning to U.S. banks not to take liberties with their deposit numbers. Is that something that you need to tell banks? Uh, a journal analysis of the bank filings with the FDIC showed that Bank of America, remember, because they wanted one of the biggest ones here, right? They have held to maturity securities as well that have massive losses on them, okay, which was a big, is a big problem for some of those banks if rates stay high, especially. Uh, and Huntington, Huntington National Bank, uh, both of those look to be higher today, why not, had among the biggest revisions to their uninsured deposit numbers. So since Silicon Valley Bank went BK in March, 47 banks restated their uninsured deposit figures downward by a total of almost $200 billion. At Silicon Valley Bank, 88% of the deposits were uninsured at year end. That's why everybody ran for the doors, okay? How did they do this? Check it out. Many of the banks that changed their numbers tried to include an unusual type of account in the category of deposits insured by the FDIC. Now, as we're all well aware right now, what's insured? Do you know what's insured? It's very simple, folks. Deposits up to 250000 End of sentence. You see that period? Period end of sentence there is no explanation necessary okay those are the accounts that are insured these accounts often from the government entities let me do that one again okay what they did here is this they have government entity accounts okay that exceed that amount 
and the banks put collateral behind them. So they effectively guarantee the depositors would be paid back if the bank failed because they're government accounts that are over that threshold. But in a letter, the FDIC said that only deposits that it insured could be called insured. Pretty basic stuff, right? The existence of collateral has no bearing on the portion of a deposit that is covered by FDIC insurance. Additionally, FDIC said some banks incorrectly showed lower numbers by excluding intercompany deposit balances of subsidiaries, not allowed as well. The largest revision was by Bank of America in a May 5th filing. They said its uninsured deposits were $784 billion, which is $125 billion less than it reported originally. They shaved $125 billion off their uninsured total number on a May 5th filing. Unlike smaller banks, Bank of America was under little threat of the mass withdrawals. Uh, I wouldn't agree with that as much. I mean, yeah, they weren't under that massive threat because guess what? Fed wasn't going to let Bank of America fail, okay? But they were under a lot of stress. Do you remember what the Bank of America chart looks like? Let's pull it up, man. $125 billion bucks. Yeah. Bank of America went from 37 to 27 in a heartbeat. That was a low on March 24th. They've clawed back a lot of those losses, um, but nothing like what, I mean, the best of them looks like JP Morgan, right? But let's even take a look. Wells Fargo basically got it all back from that March pullback. It's at 46. We got a recent high of 48. Let's see, City, ah, they're in tough shape as well. Yeah, it's a tough deal, but Bank of America may be the toughest there. So just be careful when you ever see those reports come out, right? Interesting nonetheless. Uh, not exactly super surprising, but there's your graphical representation of somehow all these uninsured deposits just going away. Yeah. So the FDIC is going to impose a special assessment on banks with more than $5 billion to cover the $15.8 billion that it cost to guarantee Silicon Valley Bank. Okay, that was what was lost. $15.8 billion is what it cost it to uninsure, to guarantee the uninsured balance at Silicon Valley Bank and Signature. The assessment would be based on the bank's uninsured deposits as of December 31st. So not only are they doing this to make sure that Wall Street doesn't get freaked out because you have too many uninsured deposits, they're also doing it because the assessment to recoup that money is based on your uninsured deposits. It's remarkable, right? It really is. So based on the special assessment formula proposed by the FDIC, Bank of America would owe $1.96 billion over two years, down from 2.27. Folks, that is $310 million. $310 million over two years by just tweaking a little accounting. And you wonder why people go crazy over these public companies, man. Uh, of course, their spokesman says they stand by the numbers. Uh, the next largest revision was hunting a national bank. They were at $51 billion or a 40% cut. Yeah, $35 billion below. So they were went from $85 billion to $51. Yeah. Just remarkable how they get away with it, man. Uh, nonetheless, so be careful when you hear all those numbers, man. Uh, anytime there's a fear contagion like that, and you think there's, I say this often, right? If the probability is greater than zero of something occurring, realize that it's possible and plan for what you'll do if it happens, because it's possible. Uh, you don't have to be around long enough, folks, for a one in a thousand shot to come in. You better be preparing for a one in a thousand event to occur if you're looking at the market every day. Because just looking at the market every day, got about 220 trading days a year. You get to a thousand in under five years. And that's just the average. That means on average, as traders, you're going to have something occur that is a literal 0.1% probability occurring. Is that right? I got to do it myself. That is correct. A one in a thousand, because a one in a hundred is one percent. So one in a thousand is zero point one percent. Say I made a trade. What's the chance of it going bad? One in a hundred? You say, nah, not even close, man. It's probably zero point one percent that that could happen. That's going to happen every four or five years if you're trading every day and you look in the market every day. Okay. When these things were going BK, you say, what's the probability that they're hiding some of actually how many uninsured deposits they have? What's the possibility? Get your capital out sometimes. We saw it happen, right? We saw it happen with Silicon Valley Bank. Why were people waiting so long? Can't even pull up anything anymore. Um, signature, etc. Why were people waiting so long, man?
the risk reward of some of those calculations, folks. Uh, yeah, we saw it play out in real time. Remember it. And those numbers from Bank of America, they should remind you to put your risk in some context there and don't always believe what they're telling you, especially as the contagion is spreading. One more segment, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Dan at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablet as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Interesting piece from Bloomberg over here early this morning. I'm going to post this one into the Tiger's Den. Uh, who wants to keep hiking rates and who doesn't? Breaking, downs the Fed. Breaking down the Fed's view, you got Waller and Mester seen as leading the push for tighter policy. Centrists led by Powell have embraced higher rates so far. And I like the graphical representation, man. You're looking at the members of the Fed. You got members in blue that are voting members, most important. You got Waller at the top there. Okay, you got Powell, of course. And then you have uh, their influence score. Talking about, of course, Powell at the top, the New York Fed president, regional bank president. Uh, next, now, I was listening to Bloomberg yesterday. It was interesting. Uh, members of the Fed versus bank presidents. Fed presidents are making like 480 grand or something like that versus FOMC members, committee members are making like 180 grand or something like that. It's interesting how this all goes down the control they have. You go down the line, of course. Uh, regional bank presidents, more important versus just the board members out there. Uh, nonetheless, you get the breakdown. I'll post this in the Tiger's Den. And as we wrap it up, folks, 
a week from tomorrow, right on the front page of TFNN. My dad was talking to Larry last night. We got our man Larry Pesavento coming up live at 1 o'clock with his program, Trade What You See. Uh, he's got a live trading webinar, folks, a week from tomorrow. Okay, Trade What You See, a live trading webinar, Wednesday, August 2nd. Larry only does two, three of these a year, 9 a.m. till 2 p.m., so it's five hours. Larry does not trade the last couple hours of the day, so that's why he lines it up like this. This is his trading sweet spot, five hours from a half hour before the open in New York to 2 p.m. Eastern time. Great segment last night just talking about everything he's going to be trading, whether it's uh, the E-mini S&P, gold, grains, if you've been following Larry as well. Folks, check it out. It's $295. You get a month of his newsletter, which is almost $100 value right away. It's archived, so you can go over the five hours at a later time if you can't catch it all while it's going on. You just want to recap what's going on. Uh, check it out, and right when you sign up, you start gaining access to his newsletter. So don't wait. Sign up. Get in there a week from tomorrow. And yeah, we got some action in this market, man, for a live trading event with our man Larry Pezzavento. And stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour, folks. Appreciate you starting your day with me. Stay tuned for Basil. He's coming up next. Have a great one, folks.